Mike, where, where did you see this one kind of going off track? Did you feel like it was at the start of the third quarter when the turnover started happening? Yeah, I think uh, we started that the half with uh, three or four, you know, almost in a row. Um, I mean, you can't you can't give this team any free points, any you know reason to get out in transition. They're one of the best teams in transition, and um, you know those are self-inflicted things that we can we can look at that we can get better at. You know, we're playing against a great team, but you know we can't you know like I said have self-inflicted wounds on ourselves and. Um, you know, spot them points because they're going to just run away with it. Trying to keep people even keel in games like this is hard. It seems like there was obviously some emotions out there. That's just kind of part of playoff basketball. Yeah, you know, emotions are high, intensity is high. Um, you know, I've been in games where we win by 30, lose by 30. You know, it's one game. Um, next game could be completely different. And so that's why you want to try to continue. You know, no matter what the score is, continue to try to play the right way, continue to have emotion, continue to be um, have have the you know the right intent when you're out there, because uh, it does carry over uh, to the next game. It didn't seem like there was one thing wrong in the execution into the post, into the two bigs. It seemed like different things were wrong at different times, like it was almost like a group dysfunction. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, you can't put it on one thing. There was, you know, there was times where we just had guys, you know, make or take tough shots for no reason or um, bypass an easy play, you know, for a harder play, uh, leading to tougher situations, leading to turnovers. Um, you know, we, we stressed a lot in the last just day just trying to get back in transition, but you can't you can't guard transition when you turn it over, uh, when you miss, miss shots long and they, you know, get outlet and the guy leaks out like – um, all those things add up at the end of a game, especially when you're playing against one of the better teams in the league. Is it frustrating for you when your teammates are not mentally ready for the moment? I think it's frustrating for all of us, you know, me included. You know, there's things I could do a lot better. Um, you know, like I said before we started the series, you know, it's a, it's a mental thing. Uh, you have to be prepared. You got to know all the plays, their plays. You got to know all the tendencies, like, you could really get to know your t the, the other team a lot when you go in these playoff series, and it's a, it's going to be a long series. We're not, you know, thinking this thing is you know a one game you know show, and this is how it's going to be. Now we're going to be we're going to be ready to go. You know, it might be a wake up call for a lot of guys on our on our team, and hopefully we'll be ready to go. Um, you know, in a couple of days. You are counting the damage that Jokic did. Is this one of the main dangers a guy like Murray going off a little bit? <clears throat> what, what did you do tonight, Murray? Um, you know, Murray was Murray. You know, he's, uh, you know, one of the better scorers, playmakers from our position. Um, you know, you almost would rather Yo could shoot more than, you know, facilitate sometimes because it wasn't just Murray. It was, you know, Brown. It was Pope. It was Gordon. Like, everybody, when everybody's going well and uh, confident and comfortable, you know, they're they're really, really tough. So we got to do a better job on all those guys, uh, limit those easy opportunities for them, and, um, you know, hopefully put a little more pressure on them. Mike, this is as ineffective as the offense has been since you, for a game since you've been here. What was missing offensively specifically? Uh, honestly, it was it was the easy reads. Like, it was, you know, if, if the guys open in the pocket, hit them, let them make the next play. Um, things that we had done, I think, a little bit in the last few games leading up to this. Uh, I think once the lead started to, we started to lose. I mean, lose the, you know, lead a little bit, and it started to get five to ten points. We started to try to do it ourselves. Um, it became like one pass shots or no pass shots or just driving in the traffic. Like we gotta, you know, trust each other. Like I say that a lot. Like trust each other is important because um, there are ways to be effective against their defense and we just got to find those pockets and swing it weak side and and let other guys you know just make those plays why is the, the, roll is the, is the thing right i mean that that was what you were getting in the first quarter is that is it as simple as the volume of pick and roll just needs to increase uh yeah it could be that you know just um and just being efficient in it like when we run it run it with intent to to make a play you know it might not be to score it might not be to you know shoot the three right away like it might be to take a couple of dribbles and be patient and 
hit the guy in the pocket or hit the swing into the corner and then let that guy make a play. Um, because granted, we didn't, you know, even the shots we did get from actions, we didn't really, you know, no, nobody really knocked down many, you know, open looks. But uh, if we generate enough of those, we generate enough opportunities, I think it just gives guys confidence. Why has rhythm and movement offensively been so difficult to sustain? Like, we see it when it's really good for you, but it just seems like consistently doing it game to game has been such a challenge. What do you think that is? Um, you know, every game is, is it's a different thing. You know, I think sometimes it's trying to get, uh, with our two bigs, trying to get spacing correct, trying to get Cat or one of our bigs to be in the post, one to be at, you know up top, and sometimes both go down at the same time, and um, that can kind of jumble up the spacing. And you know when opportunities are there for us to do a swing, swing to the corner, we might not have that guy there because you know Cat's sticking post up at that time, or Rudy's sticking roll, or um, the guy with the ball sticking ISO, whatever it is. Like we just got to be more connected. Um, on that part and, and understand that, you know, we got to use that, the spacing to create, you know, easier opportunities for us because when the spacing's bad, uh, we're slow, you know, we, the ball sticks and uh, you, we have games like we have tonight. The, when Yogi is posting up, is it hard for the off-ball defenders to not get caught just watching? Uh, man, it is. I mean, I got caught one time in the first half where he just, you know, I don't think he was looking at the corner at all, but just slung it across across court right across my face and um, I had no idea he was he even saw him so like we have to do a better job just being alert and aware um, and uh, you know he's such a great playmaker he's such a dynamic player that he can make all the ball the plays so whether you're on the ball we got to pressure him guys helping like you just always got to be aware of where your man is uh, on the weak side a game like this can make it harder to believe in the, the double pick look why what are reasons to continue to believe that that, that can work together specifically in this series? Um, like I said, this is it's, it's one game, and I'm not you know jumping ship on that at all. I think that uh, with the talent that Cat has, the talent that Rudy has individually, um, with, uh, particularly against Denver, we have to find ways to exploit it better. That's it. Like we'll look at the film and say, hey, maybe it's you know. Cat more in the pick and roll, Rudy more dropped in the, you know, flat in the post, or Rudy in the pick and roll, Cat you in the corner, like just finding different areas to, to move them around. Because um, really, it's just it's about the spacing. It's about keeping you know that floor you know open for guys to make plays and make easier reads. Because um, I have all the faith in Cat and Rudy, and uh, and us trying to figure it out. Cat has had his share of postseason struggles. What is the message to him over these next couple of days to make sure he's ready to roll for Game Two? Um, you know, next couple, we got two days, two days to really lock in. And, and I think for him, uh, watch a lot of film, um, areas where he can improve. Like they're going to double him, you know, when he gets in the post, where he can make plays, how he can make and, and take easier shots, uh, and not have to rely on, you know, the, the incredible moves he makes and tries to, you know, fade, fade aways and stuff like that, which he can make. But we got to get him easy buckets, you know, stuff that can, that can, uh, give him a little bit more wiggle room and a little bit more confidence to, to be himself. So I think we'll just, as a group, you know, uh, stay around each other, you know, just keep each other supported and um, especially him and, you know, tell him to keep moving on. You guys played with your backs against the wall for quite a bit in the last few weeks. Was there, do you think anyway, like a breath was taken before this one after you clinched that playoff spot? Uh, and I don't think we had time to even breathe, man, to be honest. Um, we've been moving. Um, Every, every game's been more important than the next one, and once we clinched, it was like, you know, you didn't even get time to like realize what happened. You're on the going on to Denver, so, um, you know, I think us getting a little bit, a couple days here to to regroup and let the smoke clear a little bit and focus on uh, the things we can improve on uh, will be good for us.